Hello there guys, welcome back to Blues Fans TV for another preview of mine, but this time an FA Cup preview as Chelsea are to take on Leicester City away from home in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup tomorrow afternoon on Sunday afternoon. And honestly, I'm super excited for it, but, and I have to mention this because it really, really is important at the moment, please make sure you subscribe to Blues Fans TV if you haven't already, because we are less than 1,000 subscribers away from 100,000 subscribers. And honestly, it's a huge milestone for us to hit. We've been working on it and towards it for ages and ages and ages. So please be sure to subscribe, honestly, would mean would mean so much to us, honestly. So um, please be sure to subscribe, tell your friends about it, tell your mum, tell your nan, tell everyone you know to subscribe. It'd be bloody brilliant. Um, but enough waffling about that. Let's just get into the video. But again, please be sure to subscribe. That would honestly be huge. And also drop a like if you do enjoy our content and if you're excited for the game against Leicester tomorrow. But um, of course, after the huge win against Manchester City, we take a small break from Premier League action as we take on Leicester. Um, and as I have done since the break, you know, I will start off, start the video off by talking about the lineup that I would personally pick um, on this side of the screen. And after that, I will show you the lineup that I that I'm basically predicting Frank Lampard to go with. And, um, you know, it is an interesting game. It's an interesting game against a tough opponent and it will be very interesting to see how much rotation will be done on both sides. Of course, starting it off with the goalkeeper, for me personally, Kepa Aritha Balaga should stay in goal. Let him keep and let him stay in the rhythm. I mean, he's a goalie, he definitely doesn't need to be rested. I know he had that one muck up against Man City, but generally I think it's been pretty good. Um, so let him stay in goal. In my opinion, you know, that's just the better option to go with. But coming to the centre-backs with Fikayo Tomori still out injured, we almost can't make two changes at centre-back. So I would give Kurt Zuma his first start since the break. The question is just who starts alongside him. Christensen was absolutely brilliant against City, arguably the man of the match, really, but also took a really heavy blow to the head, you know, with it was only the ball, but still a really heavy blow that left him quite dizzy for a little while. And also he isn't quite as vocal as Rüdiger is. So in my opinion, if the German is fine to play again, I will stick with him next to the Frenchman that is Kurt Zuma. And then coming to the fullbacks, usually I would say, you know, change it up there to give them a rest. But Aspilicueta barely ever got a rest before the break either and seemed to cope very well with it. So I would keep him in the side, but move him over to the left and start Rhys James on the right to get his first start since the break as well. And then coming to the midfield, that this is where I'm expecting more changes. And this is where I'm expecting and where I would also personally do quite a bit of rotation simply because there, in that area of the field, we have the personnel to do so because we have so many brilliant midfielders. So for me, Jorginho gets his first start um, after the break at the base of the midfield three. Mateo Kovacic for me starts to his right because he, rather surprisingly, didn't actually start against Man City. And then Ruben Loftus-Cheek finally gets to play in his best position, the attacking number eight role to the left of Jorginho, slightly ahead of him, of course. I will say though, I would also be happy if Billy Gilmore started instead of Kovacic, whether like I prefer it in a 4-3-3 or alongside Jorginho in a 4-2-3-1 with Ruben in the number 10 then, or maybe even instead of Jorginho and instead of Kovacic, I would be okay with that. I still want Jorginho to get game time because I think he's important to us. I know some of you disagree, but I think he's important to us. So I would like to see him get game time. But Billy Gilmore, of course, you know, was so brilliant in the games before the break that, you know, I could certainly understand if he started as well. Coming to the wingers though, on the left, I would just stick with Christian Pulisic. I mean, if he's fully fine and fit to start again, in my opinion, he has to. He has to keep that run of his going and if, necess if necessary, take him off after an hour. But, you know, it's just been so good you know obviously when he came on against Man City and in the game against uh, sorry when he came on against Villa and in the game against Man City as well overall so good and honestly I, I just think we need him he's our best our best let's say the player on the best form right now um only two games played fair enough and one of them he didn't even start but still I think we have to go with him if we do want to progress to the semi-finals of the FA Cup then on the other side assuming that Callum hudson is still not fully match fit although I think he might well be on the bench this time um, and come on later in the game, quite possibly. I guess I'd go for Pedro on the right wing, simply to have a little bit of rotation out wide, um, especially seeing as William started both games so far already. So, um, you know, go with Pedro there. And then up front, I mean, Tammy Abram, in my opinion, simply deserves to start there. Could, maybe should have taken the initial chance that led to the penalty against City. But overall, I thought it was really good. And Bright, when he came on, was really, really trying to get his goal. Um, some In some situations, I thought his teammates should have tried a bit harder to find him. And then we possibly, you know, could have scored more goals in that second half against City. But, you know, I think he has to start. And, you know, let's see then for the game after whether he should start or whether Giroud comes back into the side for when we go back to Premier League football. But um, coming to my predicted 11, so like I said, as you can see, this is the team that I personally would pick. But coming to my predicted my predicted 11, um, as usual with these cup games, even though I already got the City team fairly wrong, I really struggle to predict how much Lampard is going to rotate for these cup games. I don't know, I find, it, I find it really difficult. And if he does rotate, who he does rotate for, for example, this Billy Gilmore and Jorginho situation, I, f I find it find it really difficult, even with the goalie, to be honest. Like I said, I was sick with Kappa, 
But what about Frank? Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he started Caballero. The thing is, we can't even take the last FA Cup game as anything to go by because, you know, that was the first game. Kepa came actually, you know, back into the side after being out of the team for a few games. So we can't even go by that if, you know, as an indicator who Lampard, you know, goes with if he has a proper cup goalkeeper and stuff when we do face a very difficult opponent, to be honest. It's anyone's guess. But I'm going to have Kepa in the team that you will see on screen in a minute. The back four, I think, will stay the exact same. I would go for Reese James, Rudiger, um, Kurt Zuma and Aspie as the, what, as the players that I think Frank Lampard will pick, I guess. I just don't see Emerson getting a start, to be honest. I, I just don't see it happening. But the midfield is where things change compared to my you know, team, basically. Firstly, I'm expecting a 4-2-3-1 from Lampard rather than a proper 4-3-3. Or actually, I'm expecting the mix of a 4-2-3-1 and a 4-3-3 that we also used against Villa until Barkley came on. And that we've used in so many other games this season as well. I personally do think that Jorginho will start. Although I also have a bit of a feeling that Frank will just pick Gilma over him. We'll have to wait and see. Again, really difficult for that one with me. I'm expecting Golo Kante to get a rest. And Matteo Kovacic to start alongside Jorginho. And then Ruben Loftus-Cheek, I still think he will start the game. But this time in the number 10 position rather than, um, you know, like it was against Villa out wide on the left. But I do actually still believe that Mason Mount stays in the side. I mean... Physically, you know, he might not be the strongest guy, but engine-wise and, you know, stamina-wise, he's one of the best ones we have in the squad, and Lampard has used him so many times. He's played the most, not most minutes, I think, but the most games um, so far this season. So I'm expecting him to stay in the side, but I actually think he will stay in the team kind of as the right winger. This might be a bit of a crazy prediction from myself there, fair enough. But Mount also drifted out wide to the right a lot against Villa. And because I reckon Pulisic stays in the team also for Frank Lampard, meaning the left side, the left wing is occupied, it makes sense to me that Mason Mount will be on the right because he fits the right better than Loftus-Cheek does, in my opinion. So, you know, it's as simple as that. It could just be completely different. It could just be, I don't know, William and Pedro at the start. We'll have to wait and see, but this is my prediction, I guess. And then, of course, Tommy Abraham. Still, you know, we'll start up front also for Frank Lampard. I'm pretty sure of that one. And, um, you know, like I said, I could be well off with this, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. As for the game itself, I would like us to be very aggressive. I mean, we weren't so much so aggressive against Man City. But as much as Leicester City are a good team, they're not quite Man City. So, um, you know, keep the passing crisp, be aggressive. Um, but almost more importantly, or most importantly, make sure that movement in the final third is on point. The more we move, the more runs we make, you know, the more likely we'll be to find a breakthrough against them. It's, it's as simple as that. You know, the more movement you have, the more difficult it is for the opponent to kind of mark you and, you know, stop you from creating attacks. And of course, as I always say, be bloody clinical. I mean, I mentioned it already. We beat City, but somehow we still won clinical. Could have scored at least two or three in that second half, not just one. Um, so, you know, we could have made it easier for ourselves. So let's hope we can be more clinical against Leicester tomorrow. But let's quickly talk about Leicester before getting to my score prediction. And they're a very good team. Of course, they're a very good team. I mean, they're ahead of us in the league for a reason. So I'm expecting a difficult game. But they haven't been in great form since the restart. Two draws from the two games so far. And with their opponents only being Watford and Brighton, that's not exactly brilliant. Hence why um, we managed to close the gap to them to just one point in the league, which of course is good and, you know, leaves more than a chance for us to actually finish third, not just fourth in the, fourth in the league table after our win against Man City. Um, I mean, yeah, Leicester were still the better team in those two games against Watford and Brighton, but clearly didn't capitalise capitalize on that, even though, other than Amati and Ricardo Pereira, the right back, they have everyone fit and available. Um, just to quickly talk about them tactically, I guess, they all, they pretty much always line up in a 4-2-3-1, Obviously, have many dangerous player, players in Jamie Vardy, Barnes, Madison, Ayoza Perez, and more midfield as well in Tillemans or whatever. And as we learned, it, you know, in our two old draw against them on February 1st, when arguably they were the better team, you know, but Rudiger saved us, you know, a point with two headed goals from corners, if I remember correctly. They're a good team, you know, they are a good team as we learned in that game. And interestingly, actually, both times we played them this season, both in that two old draw um, at the King Power Stadium at the beginning of February, and also a one old draw at uh, Yes, I won our draw at the bridge early in the season. Both times, the possession was exactly equally shared with 50% on both sides. So they definitely know how to play ball. They definitely know how to play ball because we're a good footballing team. And we almost always have more of the ball. And if they can, you know, manage to even it out, that means they're a good footballing team. And especially winning second balls will play a big part in who ends up going through to the semi-final when, you know, teams are fairly even overall even though I think our form is a little bit better and I still think we have the better team overall those second balls will be crucial so you know the intensity needs to be there on our side it really really needs to be super high even though we've already had two games and not that much fitness preparation and stuff it absolutely needs to be there because I'm pretty damn sure that it will be you know on their side the intensity it will be there but coming to my score prediction I do believe that we will be victorious the prediction I'm going to go with is a 2-1 away win over 90 minutes 
but I could also very much see it going to extra time. You know, I could honestly very much so see that be, see that being the case as well. What is interesting, actually, and I quickly want to touch on it. Obviously, there's now five substitutions allowed, and I don't actually have this confirmed, but I'm pretty sure there should now be six subs allowed if we make it to extra time, which would be interesting. Six subs in a game, in a competitive game, that that that'd be quite interesting. But like I said, you know, overall. It's going to be a difficult game. They're going to be a difficult opponent. It's going to be very interesting how to see how much they rotate. Will they start Vardy? Will they start Madison? Um, you know, all of those players. Also, Chilwell going to be interesting to look at because obviously we are linked with him. Um, so obviously, the better he plays, I guess, the more likely we are to sign him. But also, the better he plays, the more likely we are to not go to the semi final. So let's hope we can go to the semi final. Like I said, my prediction is for us to win, but I'm expecting a difficult game. Um, and yeah, honestly, guys, I think I think that's that's kind of it. I don't really have anything else to add here. I'm not sure. I think this video might have been a little bit shorter than the last few. Um, so that's that, I guess. But like I said in the beginning, please, honestly, guys, make sure you subscribe to Blues Fans TV. Help us reach that milestone, a huge milestone of 100,000 subscribers, less than a thousand to go. So everyone, you know, just tell them and tell them to subscribe. Subscribe yourself if you are new. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Drop a like on this video if you're excited for the game tomorrow. And also leave me your thoughts ahead of the game down in the comments section below. Your score predictions, your predicted lineups, and your thoughts on you know the team that i would go for and the team that i'm predicting frank lampard to pick leave me all of that down in the comments section below but yeah that's really been it for me thank you guys for watching up the chels super excited for the game tomorrow and i'll see you when i see it